Well, hey everybody, it's me, Mitch. I'm going to make my breakfast. Well, actually, it's lunch because it's afternoon already. Today I want to talk about gut health, digestion, and fiber as it relates to carnivore. You know, there's so many misconceptions, false information, rules about health based on propaganda. And I think perhaps one of the biggest, most destructive misleading aspects of, of nutrition is how it relates to gut health. Now, fortunately, I never had to put up with any of the really serious digestive diseases. And I'm talking about IBD. That means inflammatory bowel disease. That includes things like Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, serious, debilitating, life-altering conditions that ironically are greatly helped, at least in the, in the experience that we see on so many of these testimonials from people who've changed their life eating, eating the uh, meat-heavy diets, cutting back on the plant material, the fiber. Too many to absolutely ignore as, as crackpots. And yet, if you listen to traditional nutritional advice, you would be led to believe that fiber is an essential nutrient. And <laughs> the absurdity of that statement leaves out any basic under understanding of what fiber actually is. Fiber is, in most part, indigestible, cellulose-based plant material that our body cannot use, whose only purpose seems to be touted as feeding our microbiome. And our microbiome doesn't exist for us to feed it. It exists and made up of the bacteria that predominantly feed off of what we eat. So the microbiome of a carnivore is going to be, I would say, wildly different from the microbiome of a vegetarian. To have a, and to keep promoting and taking probiotics to keep alive those strains of bacteria whose adaptive role has been to feed on what is basically the indigestible parts of plants that we eat along with what we think we're getting in nutrition. It's an amazing fact that if you're not eating the wood, you don't need the bacteria that feed off of that. And your microbiome will find its appropriate level through natural selection. The bacteria that don't have the food they need will downregulate. They'll disappear. The bacteria that help us and process the food from animal products that we eat will prosper and our microbiome will change. 
there's so much made of microbiome and managing it and taking probiotics and all this other stuff. I think we've got it backwards. That's my opinion. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think we got it backwards. I think the way to maintain the proper microbiome is to just eat. Just eat what's good for you, what makes you feel better, what does away with your sicknesses and your your illnesses. For me, my whole entire life, and I'm going to talk about my experience, my gut experience, and my gut right now is... What? Not only have I gotten rid of my visceral fat, but I've gotten rid of symptoms that plagued me my entire life. I have diverticulosis. Diverticulosis is what happens to your colon when it's constantly blocked up and constantly expanding and pushing on the walls of your colon. It's kind of like a, a colon aneurysm, if you know what that is. That's when a blood vessel from the pressure balloons out. And these diverticuli, once you get them, you're pretty well stuck with them. The problem with these diverticuli is that they are little pouches coming off of your colon and sometimes certain foods will kind of make a home there and they'll get inflamed and that's when diverticulosis becomes diverticulitis. That's serious. Incredibly inflammatory and very bad for you. I had this problem for years. I also had the problem with being blocked up almost all the time. Always blocked up. Always constipated. Always thinking that I maybe I actually had an intestinal blockage that needed some kind of surgical intervention. Because of that, I found myself, and I don't want to use the word addicted, but relying on laxatives my whole life. And not just one or two tiny little X-lax pills, but huge quantities of laxatives. To make matters worse, all the gastroenterologists that I had seen kept telling me that I'm blocked up because I wasn't getting enough fiber in my diet. And they've got that backwards. It's the fiber that was blocking me up. So I would be taking the Metamucil and then I'd be taking huge quantities of laxatives. I would be miserable and bloated all the time. Treating the symptoms as so often is the case, rather than treating the cause of the disease or the condition. It took me a long time to learn that not only is that counterproductive, but it's also counterintuitive. If you start thinking about things in logical terms, Why would you want to keep cramming yourself full of stuff that the body has no use for and can't rate, wait to get rid of? Yet, the measure of great health for people who advocate for a plant-based diet is humongous dumps multiple times a day. Why? Why would anybody 
rationally thinking, assume that that's a great idea and in some way healthy. Now, for a year and a half that I've been pure carnivore, I have not eaten a gram of fiber, according to all the people who know everything. I shouldn't be alive today. How could I survive for a year and a half without an essential nutrient? Doesn't the word essential mean anything? I know what essential amino acids are. I know how they play a role in our cellular metabolism. I know how they're necessary to build proteins. But I have not seen any, any biological explanation of what that essential fiber is, is supposedly doing in our body. I, I haven't heard anybody or read any papers that explain what happens to you if you're not eating that essential fiber. And again, on this journey of mine, this experiment of one, I found that by eliminating the fiber, eliminating all the plant foods, for the first time in my life, my, my digestive system actually works. It works. At, in the beginning, I worried. I worried about the fact that I wasn't going to the bathroom all that much. And we tend to assume that when we don't go to the bathroom, that we're constipated. Well, that's not what constipation means. Constipation means that your stools are solid, hard. It's the opposite of diarrhea. Excuse me while I beat my eggs. mistaken about that. I was, like most people, lab laboring under the assumption that if you're not having a couple of healthy bowel movements every day, that there's something wrong with you. I didn't understand what the purpose of the colon really was. I didn't realize that it was kind of like your trash can outside. During the course of the week, you put your trash in the trash can a little bit at a time, and then when it gets full, the trash guy comes. Well, that's kind of the way our colons work. You don't need to go every day unless you're producing a lot of waste. And I also through talking to so many other people doing this lifestyle, realized that I wasn't constipated. It was normal to go anywhere from two, three days up to a week or more without having enough of your body's waste in your colon for your colon to think it's time to, like a trash compactor, run through the cycle of getting rid of it. And it took months for a lifetime of getting used to a certain gut health to accept the fact that this is probably more like what's supposed to be normal for us instead of the way that we've been living based on just plain wrong advice about how our digestive tract actually works. When I say it took long, I'll say it took a year before my whole digestive system finally settled down to what it is 
today after over a year and a half on carnivore. And that is, between five and seven days, I get a little urge. If I don't act on it today, the urge will get a little stronger tomorrow. But nothing, never any urgency like I used to have when it finally decided it's got to come out. It's kind of like, okay, Mitch, we could probably empty ourselves out now, but you know, if you want to wait till tomorrow, that'd be okay too. No urgency whatsoever, ever. The consistency, and here's the bathroom talk, of my stools is perfect now. Not too hard, not too soft. Like Little Red Riding Hood. I have Little Red Riding Hood stools. Just right. I don't worry about it anymore because I've heard so many other so many other people talk about exactly the same thing. My gut isn't busy most of the time. And the reason for that is that meat, the foods that we're eating, are the foods that we're supposed to eat. They're almost completely biodegradable. There's nothing that I put into my mouth now that my body says, what the hell is that? We need to get rid of it. Now, part of what you accumulate in your colon is your body's other waste material from breaking down old dead cells, things that it can't recycle. But there's not all that much of that stuff. And interestingly enough, I eat two plus pounds of food every day. My body uses those two plus pounds of food every day to create energy and rebuild. It goes somewhere. I still, this morning, weighed 138 pounds, 139 pounds. That's what I weigh every day. I'm never hungry. I always eat to satiety. My digestive system is working like it's never, ever, ever worked before. Without fiber, without taking all their advice, without taking their Metamucil, without taking all the other stuff that they want to sell me to fix the problem that they've created with their erroneous advice. So if you become a carnivore, for the first month, you're going to have bathroom adventures because your whole gut has to readjust itself to this. Your microbiome has to starve out those bacteria that lived on the fiber you ate and let the good bacteria grow. They're not going to be happy during that transition, which is why so many people have a week or two of diarrhea when they first start this. You're also going to feel a lack of energy because the whole system in your body that creates energy for you at a cellular level has to relearn that sugar is not your primary fuel anymore. Fat is. Just resign yourself that you're going to go through this if you start this way of life and give it enough time to come out the other side. No pun intended. You'll find that all of that discomfort, all of that bloating, all of that gas that you used to have will slowly transition to a normal functioning bowel and digestive system, which is the way we're supposed to be. It's amazing. Maybe one of the 
besides mental clarity, may be one of the best, best side effects of this whole lifestyle. So with that thought, <laughs> bathroom talk, take the rest of the day off and eat meat. Thank <laughs> you.